Here's the scoop on what's happening in the music scene. Burna Boy, the superstar known as the African Giant, recently dropped a bombshell. He says, Diddy owns me. Hard to believe, right? This Grammy-winning artist now feels stuck under the music mogul's control. What was supposed to be a simple collaboration has apparently turned into a nightmare. Stick around, and you'll see the music industry in a totally different way. Isn't it weird that the government was so interested in Diddy's baby all that they took a thousand bottles away from his house? If the government took a thousand bottles of baby oil and somebody had things what appeared to be baby oil and then you have to listen to the prosecutor. He said that they seized a thousand bottles what allegedly to be baby oil. Allegedly to be baby oil. So that's telling people that it wasn't baby oil. And people think that that was baby oil they out they mind. I don't believe it was baby oil. Yo, bro, when they went up in there, they knew what they was gonna find. They knew what was ever in that baby oil or that, that, that those bottles that appeared to be baby oil, they knew about that at first. You gotta realize nine times out of 10, that individual that got caught at the airport, that was supposed to be their carrier, told them, what they was doing and what they had. I wouldn't put him past that he told them everything. So when they went up in there, they knew they had to take whatever was out there and that thing that appeared to be baby oil, they took that. They gotta test every last one of them. Remember when Burna Boy was on top, Grammy in hand, embracing his title as the African giant well, rumors are swirling that things aren't as bright as they seem. Let's rewind a bit. Berna, whose real name is Demini Ebunalua Ogulu, made his mark in Nigeria with his unique Afrofusion beats, building buzz with hit after hit. His album African Giant had everyone hooked, leading to his first Grammy nomination. Then in 2021, he took home the Grammy for twice as tall, and it looked like he was living the dream, magazine covers, pack shows, and rubbing shoulders with major stars. But as they say, not all that like glitters is gold, how many of those come back to be baby oil? Bruh, listen to me. Costco don't sell that much baby oil. Where you know sell that much baby oil? Yeah, I don't know any store that sell that much baby oil. I know Costco, they came out and said that they don't even sell baby oil. My sentiments exactly. <laughs> but you personally, right? What do you believe was in the baby oil? If you ever seen a massage parlor being raided, and they walking out the people. Do they take the massage y'all with them when they go? No, they just walk out the people who are being arrested. If you ever seen a person getting arrested and the people being arrested in those brothel houses, do they take out the stuff in the brothel houses? No, they don't. They take the individuals who are being arrested out the brothel houses. For them to take a thousand bottles of baby oil, it's like that they did not leave one. They left people there, but they ain't leave not one bottle. Nobody needed no baby oil. So my whole thing about it is, is that there was something in that other than baby oil. That's why they took all the bottles. And nine times out of 10, if I would give it a wild guess, it was, and like some of the people told me, it was probably that GHB. What's that? I think it's gamma hydrox, hydrox, I don't, I, I looked it up, bro. Let me see, see if I can find it. I know this is, it is, this is just showing everything like that, but, oh no, 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 I'm, I'm, let me, yo, somebody tap dance or sing or do something, you know what I'm saying, while I'm doing this. Oh, here it go, right here. It's gamma hydroxy butyric, 
what is it effect on the body? It's a euphoria, drowsiness, decreased anxiety and memory impairment. It works on the nervous system and gives you this feeling of euphoria. So they take that and rub it on it and you forget who you are, what you are doing. It can also give you memory loss, drowsiness. And that's under the DEA, the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, .gov. Rumors started flying and fans quickly noticed something seemed off with Burna Boy. Despite his success, he didn't seem as happy as expected. Out of the blue, he started posting strange messages online, one day celebrating, the next hinting at feeling trapped. It was like trying to piece together a mystery. Then Diddy entered the picture. At first, it looked like a great fit, Diddy's connections with Burna's fresh Afrobeat sound, but soon people wondered, why would Burna, already at the top, even need Diddy's help? Soon, cracks began to show. Burna wasn't just frustrated, he felt stuck. He started hinting at creative conflicts and losing control of his music. It was a slow building drama that left fans glued to every update. No, you wanna sit around and pretend to like bitch. <laughs> That's what y'all do. And then you get these hard Jocelyn? So I'm just like curious. these are these are the you like half man bitches. Mm. No disrespect, but Jocelyn Ruff. <laughs> Them shoulders is. And the way she like running up on, I already know she done strapped up on you. Ooh. Ooh. So Jack, let me ask you. There's one, the, the shock, some of the shocking. Things I hear that, that heard. mean with a harness. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, not a harness. Yeah. So I, I gotta ask you this. I'm sure somebody's already asked you this, but have you ever been to a P Diddy party? Yeah, except many, honestly. And so, can you take us through like what goes on, like when you were there? What did I say when y'all asked me about the why was the TD Jakes at the Diddy party? Yeah. What I say? Money. Money. And sex. That's it. That's correct. Were you surprised that there were so many cameras in his houses? No! That he was recording these... Oh, that he is the J. Edgar Hoover of hip-hop! Mm. Okay. Y'all done seen him put on the pyramid with a skirt? <laughs> so let me ask you, when you hear that Cassie was told to hire male escorts to come in the, what they call freak-offs now, yeah. Um, that is something, is that something normal that yeah. happens in Hollywood? Yeah. Freak offs. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, everybody know that. <laughs> I've been saying it. Yeah. Yeah. What, how many times I got some, this is wild. <laughs> so do you feel like people, when they hear uh, pink cocaine, young Miami has to bring across that? Wait, the two, the, the two C. Yeah, the two C. That's what they call I got, No, I found out. I talked to my drug guy. Because I wanted to be informed because people was calling it 2C, they calling it the Tunchi. I didn't know which one it was. So I talked to my drug guy and my drug guy filled me in. And then it made perfect sense. 2C. Talk to him. Drugs with Jaguar. <laughs> Let's talk. Just drugs <laughs> education. <laughs> one on one. So 2C is the coke, But they take the category and cook it up. And they, they fold it into the cup. Now, if you don't know what cat is, cat is what they call on the street special cat. It's a veterinary drug. It's a horse tranquilizer. Now, gay men have been using this for years. See, back in the day, if you went to a gay party or a gay rave, there were certain drugs that you will always find on hand. Viagra, XD, Special K and cocaine. <laughs> now, see, the cocaine keep you up all night, but unfortunately, it gives you limp noodle because of what the blood flow is. So, the, you who wants to fuck with a half hard dick all night? So that's why you had the Viagra to make sure that the the dick involuntarily stays hard while you're numbing your fucking self with the coke. Now, see, the ketamine that's a horse tranquilizer, so that relaxes all your muscles. 
you could get fucked by 80 fucking um, ton gorillas. You wouldn't feel a thing. So now, your dick is gonna stay hard. You numbed up and you high. You got the ketamine in you so you don't feel shit. And then you add the, the ecstasy to put in the feeling that you've now blocked out. And now you got a party. Freak off cocktail. How bad can this deal actually be? Well, it's not just bad. It's downright shocking. Word has it Burna Boy's contract with Diddy is so twisted, it makes classic record deals look easy. Let's break it down. At first glance, Burna Boy teaming up with Diddy sounded like a winning combo. You'd expect non-stop hits and big celebrations, right? But rumors say there's a lot more going on here. Initially, the contract likely looked pretty simple. Diddy's label would handle distribution, promotion, and the business side while Burna focused on his music. Seems fair, right? But here's the catch, the fine print. And in this case, it's giving sign your life away vibes. These contracts can get complicated, covering everything from royalties to merch and tour revenue. Some of these terms are sneakier than that friend who always forgets her wallet at dinner. And then maybe that if they knew there was gonna ever be a YouTube or they knew there was gonna ever be social media, uh, a lot of the stuff probably wouldn't have got played out like it did. But things happen and, and these are just stories from the past. I would like to use that as, uh, what you call that? Um, just, just, to, just to clear the facts up what's going on. But it all started, we was in Atlanta. And this story starts when I'm with Puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping, right? He's shopping, getting his stuff and everything like that. So, you know, this is the first time I was ever in an exotic bookstore with Puff. So, you know, I'm giving him his space. He's taking things off the shelves and stuff like that because they gave him a brown paper bag. When they gave him a brown paper bag, he was just putting stuff in there. So I said, damn, you know, he got to go put it on the counter and, you know, show everybody what he's getting. So as he's going, I'm just looking at the places where he's picking stuff from. So there's one part he, <laughs> he picked up uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a, quite a few of them down. I'm like, yeah, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there I, and it said butt plugs. And I was like, hey, yo, <laughs> I, was, I was messing with him. Cause people don't understand, you know, we was, we, we was like friends. He was a part of the same gang. So I'm still going to tease him. I'm still going to mess with him and everything like that. I could do that. It wasn't just no security thing. So I say, yo, what are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said butt plugs. And he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah, you could do it by yourself, brother. And he started walking and everything like that. And when he got to, I just waited at the counter. And when he got to the counter, he didn't even have to show the guy nothing. He just gave the guy a wad of money. I mean, I mean, like, he gave a, the guy a stack something like this. And Puff wasn't a dude that carried no 20s and no 50s or nothing like that. And I mean, like, he just said, boom. And we walked out the store. So we had to leave Atlanta and go to uh, North Carolina for a show. You understand? And um, it was him, this rapper, Sarah, and this other girl. We all got on a, G, a G, G5 jet, and we flew to, uh, G4 jet, and we flew to uh, uh, North Carolina. So uh, later on that, I think that afternoon, same day, um, this rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff, and, and this dude, this rapper. So, uh... Burna Boy isn't the first artist to get caught in a tough contract. Remember Prince? He famously wrote Slave on his face to protest his deal with Warner Bros. and TLC. They sold millions of records but still ended up broke because of their contract. And this isn't Diddy's first time in the game either, if you catch my drift. So what's at stake for Burna? Potentially everything. His music, his money, his freedom. These contracts can lock down an artist's whole career, controlling their sound, image, and even collaborations. It's like being in a relationship where the other person decides what you wear, who you see, and even what you eat. Now, here's the real shocker. Burna recently hinted in a leaked interview that his contract with Diddy might be even worse than we thought. Apparently, Diddy gets a cut of everything. 
is tours, merchandise, endorsements, you name it. It's like Diddy's got his hands in every part of Berna's career, leaving Berna with barely a crumb. Interview Interview With Diddy involved in every part of Berna's career, you'd think Berna would be living large. But what if I told you this deal is brewing up pure chaos? Word is, there's backstage drama intense enough to put reality TV to shame. At first, Berna and Diddy were all smiles, posting pics together in the studio, at parties, even relaxing on yachts. It looked like a hip-hop power duo was forming, but behind those perfect photos and hashtags, the real story was heating up faster than a hot pocket. We're talking about intense arguments in the studio that make Simon Cowell seem soft, plus creative clashes that feel more like battles. And when it came to money talks? Let's just say things got uglier than Crocs at Fashion Week. Interview Interview Let's dive into these power dynamics. Diddy has connections that run deep. He's been in the industry longer than many fans have been alive. But Berna? He's got that raw electrifying talent and the whole African market rooting for him. It's like David vs. Goliath Music Edition. Then, fans began noticing a change in Berna's sound. It didn't feel like the natural growth of an artist. It was more like, is Berna turning into a Diddy clone? Was this the so-called Diddy effect? Or was the African giant losing his spark? Berna looked like he was under serious pressure, like someone trying to drive with the brakes on. He was pushing hard but seemed to be getting nowhere, and in interviews, you could see the stress on his face, like a student during finals. Things soon went from bad to worse. Berna started feeling like he was losing his grip on his music, career, and even his image, while Diddy held the reins tightly, like he was guarding the last piece of candy. What began as a dream collaboration had turned into a full-blown power struggle. Berna realized too late that he was playing checkers in a chess match, struggling to be heard. The music industry can be colder than an ex heart, and Berna was definitely feeling that chill. At the door and stuff like that, like, yeah, so then, next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door, and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, uh, he busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. He said, well, I'm going in there. I said, bruh, you ain't going in there because he told me they don't want nobody to be bothering him. And he was like, yo, I don't care, man. I'm going in there. That, that boot like that. I said, yo, bruh, Jesus Christ had to come down here and take the air out of my body before you get in that room right there. Watch, watch. He tried to bum rush me. I grabbed him and threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Ru runs out the room Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the f naked. And so then, uh, Ja was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, G, that's my cousin. He know me well. You know, uh, and Puff was like, yo, G, what happened? I said, he tried to get in the room. I told him he couldn't get in the room. And he was like, he just looked, Puff looked at Ja. He said, yo, Ja said, you ain't want to go in that room because there's a lot of freaking going on. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, he said it was a lot of freaky going on. So that was basically that story, man. You know what I'm saying? They went back in the room, dude felt a certain kind of way, and he left out. So we, I seen them at the concert the next day, and they tried to, you know, form up against me. But my man Frank was like, I told my man Frank, I was like, yo, Frank, put yourself in that position. Somebody trying to get in the room, and Jai told you don't let nobody get in the room. What would you do? Now y'all can do whatever y'all want to do, man. But you know I ain't taking no losses. He said, yo, you good, you good, and that was it. Bruh, when, when Josh said, you don't want to come up in there, a lot of freaky stuff is going on. You got to use your mind. What they was doing with those butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought Burna Boy was out, he's back swinging. But let's be real. Diddy isn't going down easy, this battle between them could shake up the entire music industry. So who's going to come out on top? Burnett isn't just sitting around feeling sorry for himself, he's fighting back, and things are getting messy, he's dropping subtle hints in interviews, and his music is full of cryptic messages. One minute he's singing about love, the next he's throwing shade, but Diddy's team isn't staying quiet, they're spinning the story like crazy, it's a full blown he said, he said drama. Diddy's camp is calling Burna ungrateful, while Burna's side is shouting, free Burna, Loud and clear, now the lawyers are stepping in, and it's turning into a serious David versus Goliath battle. Burma's legal team is working non-stop, while Diddy's lawyers think they've got it all wrapped up. But remember, David did beat Goliath, so don't count Burn out just yet. She's supposed to be a girl!
good bitch. No matter who she with. All the time he putting a groom in her. Of course he thought it was still going to work. He thinks he's God. All right. He ain't doing shit. Rape the fuck out of that bitch. Put the boots to her last time I seen her. Her and her trainer, boyfriend, husband. I don't get no so, so you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people, yeah. blowing up cars. Yeah. Is he this gangster that behind the scenes that ever is that him or is that shout Peter out Ryan? to Wendy Williams, the first woman to uncover the homo thugs? That's what these download b was called when Wendy first started talking about it in the nineties. The homo thug. She talking about Diddy. And then what's the stuff that's happening with Wendy Williams? You think this is all connection to? Of course. They've been waiting. He's been waiting. He was waiting for Kim. Remember? He was waiting. The casket was ready. She was literally casket ready. Some people are saying the whole Wendy Williams documentary that she's pretty much allegedly playing this way to keep herself safe from him from any unalive. It's been working for Orlando Brown. Uh, why wouldn't it work for Wendy? To play crazy. Why, why, why wouldn't it work? Hey, no. Hey. The oosh goss woosh wash. <laughs> Orlando's brilliant. Right. Yeah. Y'all spent time with yeah, him. We did. Yeah. He's highly intelligent. Yes. Imagine what it's been like to wear this character for this long. No, I can only- That he does as a character. Actually, the shit he does online is the best acting he does. Is he speaking truth? Of course he is. Oof. Yeah, no. We seen quite on Major set. Major pain in his ass. Literally. <laughs> Since he was a kid. Oh, man. Oh. And in fucking milk, running the fuck around, talking about expensive pain no. in his ass. Wait, this is Philly you're talking about now. Wait a minute, Jack. Fuck me. Wait a minute. He's a fucking Fruit Loop. He did he five. This is Philly. He's a deep fried <laughs> he did he fried. He did he fried. He didn't did he do our bop. Fuck me. Real rap. You think that audio that they put out was real? Yeah, that was real. <laughs> Nikki put that out to here. That, that Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. She been waiting to drop that shit on me. Oh. She just wasn't going to tell nobody it was Diddy. But now that Diddy out there, why not? So then who's the guy who's claiming he recorded it? Yeah. Oh, the somebody bouncer. that got paid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said like I was yeah, standing outside the door. Yeah, somebody that got paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like it wasn't semen or fluid. That D Justin Bieber was wiping away from his mouth when he brought his face up from Odell Beckham's groin in a club with Trey Songz on the lookout. The, the images are there. Diddy Fire! And just like that, a raid happens at Diddy's house and fans are losing it. It's like the music industry's version of Asterisk Team Edward Asterisk versus Asterisk Team Jacob Asterisk, except with more bass and fewer sparkly vampires. Some fans are all in for Berna, claiming Diddy's trying to hold him back, while others are sticking by Diddy, saying Burn is just being dramatic. As for the rest of us, we're just grabbing our popcorn and watching the drama unfold. But it's not just fans picking sides, other artists are getting involved too. Some are backing Burna, sharing their own stories of bad deals and lost creative freedom. Meanwhile, others are staying quiet, probably worried they'll be the next target. It's high school drama but with way more money and way better outfits. So what's really at stake here? It's not just hurt feelings. Burma's entire reputation is on the line. He could either come out of this as a hero or be branded as a difficult diva. And Diddy, 
His whole mogul image could take a big hit if things don't go his way. Oh, and the money. There's probably enough at stake to buy a small country. But here's the real tea. Berna's fight is bigger than just him now. It's exposing some seriously shady practices in the music industry. People are starting to ask the tough questions, like, why do these contracts feel like they're from the devil? And why are artists still getting the raw deal in 2023? They saw what he did to Cassie. With the kicking, the punching. They saw what they did to Cassie. They know that nobody in America like that. So now, these people are represented by a brand. Whether it's something about the music, clothing, movies. They not gonna come out and speak on nothing that has anything to do with them. And they praying that they not on the tape. Doing crazy stuff, being oiled up in the whole nine yards. They praying. So until the feds say, hey, yo, listen here. <laughs> oh, we got you on, hey buddy, we got you on this tape. And uh, girl looked like she was pretty young. We're not gonna, sh we're not gonna show it, but uh, we need you to come and testify against Brother Love, P Diddy, Puff Daddy, you know, Sean Combs. That's when they're gonna start talking and they're not gonna be talking in his favor. When the feds come to them and show them what they got on tape, because if he had 250 tapes all over, 250 cameras all over the house, somebody got caught stealing a cookie out the cookie jar. It could be your favorite pastor. It could be your favorite politician. But they didn't think they was being watched and Brother Love was watching. Yeah, I mean, T.D. Jakes, he hasn't even came out and said anything. And him and Diddy was real cool. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man. And I and I know the people in the congregation over there is shaking in their boots because this man then led them probably, allegedly, allegedly, probably led them to damnation because those people's hearts are going to be broken if that man is seen on those tapes doing anything. Because people always put their faith in the pastor instead of putting their faith in God. And what they need to do is understand that he's just a man. And he has a history. It's not looking too good for him. So you feel like celebs are worried that they might be on tape? Oh, they know. That's why they ain't speaking up or saying nothing. Yeah, I was at a daddy party, but I know I ain't do nothing. Uh, When you don't know somebody's taping you, when you don't know that somebody is videoing you in some kind of form or fashion, you and you got that alcohol, you got the drugs in you, they're a little loose, bruh. They let down all their inhibitions. The music is pumping. He said it himself. He got it so hot in there that you got to take your clothes off. He said that himself, bruh. So a lot of them, like, like what, 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 what was what he said? I think a lot of them was being swallowed. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> they tell off on themselves all the time, man. You just gotta listen. But why do you think Diddy had all them hidden cameras? Bro, when you that powerful, you didn't get that powerful without having one or two or maybe three ups on somebody. Diddy always been the type of individual they want to have ups on the next person, no matter what they was doing. Like, he always played artists against each other. He did it to Big, he did it to Craig Mack. You understand? 
I said before, he did the stuff to Ja Rule. You know what I'm saying? So how the ups on Ja Rule, so he could go after Jay Z. You understand what I'm saying? So he always played those time kind of up games on people. So to hide those cameras and know what he was doing, it's gonna give him the ups on everybody who came to that party. Even your favorite basketball player. Ain't no party like a Diddy party. We know who said that. Girl, this Burna Boy and Diddy saga is like the drama that never ends. Every time you think it's settled, there's a new twist. But honestly, it's making us all take a closer look at those flashy music deals. Maybe that glitter in the industry isn't as shiny as it seems. So what's going to happen next? Will Burna break free from the chains, or will Diddy keep him locked down like those jeans after Thanksgiving dinner? The buzz is real, but no one knows how it'll play out. One thing we do know though, this drama isn't cooling down anytime soon. What do you think? Will Burna roar back stronger, or is Diddy's empire too strong to shake? LeBron said that, but yeah, you might be right. You know, it sounds like he had all them hidden cameras to use it against people. I think that was said in the indictment, right? That, that, that was said in the indictment. You know, somebody, I think Dawn may have said that. I don't, I, don't, I don't know for sure, and correct me if I'm wrong. He would, even if you didn't want to do something, he would tell the individual, well, I got you on tape doing it before. And the person would feel pressured in having to do something or come and do something at the party or be at the party because he already had him on tape right then and there. But what you think when you do it the second time? He's still gonna have you on tape. Those tapes is the one who's killing because people don't understand this. Little Rod, he's taping for Diddy in some occasions. When he wrote his indictment up, no, when he wrote his, um, when his, when, when his, when his lawyer wrote up the uh, his briefs and submitted it, he must have had some kind of, he must have been a prosecutor somewhere or something like that, because he wrote it up like it was an indictment. You understand? Saying all the stuff that had happened. Then, people don't understand this. After he wrote it up and he had the, the, the tape, the tapes and everything, they sent that to the feds. The feds open up a case on that. Everybody think it's happened. Oh, the feds looked at Cassie getting Cassie getting beaten, and then they just open up a, 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 a case. Nah. I think it was more so Lil Rob and them sending the feds that information. They put in a civil suit, then sent the other stuff over to the feds, and it read like an indictment. So they had to look at it because they see some crimes that was committed in that. And lo and behold, they do a raid on the house. So, you to get back to your question, all the footage and everything that they have is gonna either help, it's gonna help them Get some more people or get enough people just to hang Diddy.